King David? King David ran from Saul for nine years. And he was hiding in all different types of places. What does that mean? 
All right, let's go over here. We're going to work it out. But when King David, when the Ark of the Covenant came back finally, he danced before the Lord. And Saul's daughter was married to King David. And she said, what are you doing? You're a king. You shouldn't be acting this way. Now I'm going to paraphrase what he said for it to be relevant today. He said, girl, if you think that was crazy, you just wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Because he was running from Saul, but he was back being a king again. And he's back in the presence of Almighty God. And he wanted to dance a little bit. Amen? So when we're saying, God, you are good, let's really sing it. Make a declaration. Blow this roof off this building. Make a declaration, Kevin Copley, that God is good. God is. Come on, you got to give him a God chance. is. God is. Come on, let's start praising him today. Come on, 
on, there's freedom for people today. Fold in darkness, frozen like a stone, light is breaking. In a stable for a throne, and he shall reign forevermore, forevermore, and he shall
we're going to go back to the, and he shall reign forever. Because I think there's like, Jordy said, we need to just declare that. the title of our sermon today. Go ahead and put it up here, Chris. Change your perspective. You might have started out kind of rough, and you might have had a rough upbringing, and maybe your mother and father weren't as good as they should have been, or, or this, that, and the other, or maybe they were good parents, but you made some wrong choices. But today, God wants to me to tell you it's time to change your perspective. We're going to change our perspective the way we look at ourselves and the way we look at others. Amen. It's time to change our perspective. My dad used to always say, I'll never forget, he always had funny sayings. But I was working at this place one time, and I could not get a day off to save my life because we were shorthanded. And he wanted me to go take off, play golf with him. And I said, Dad, I just can't get off because we don't have enough workers. I was working here in town in Scottsburg at a factory, 
And so my dad decided back that he, he would take it on himself to do the hiring for the company. So he went in all the halfway houses that he could find and say, my boy needs a day off where I can play golf. Why don't you go apply for a job up there? <laughs> so all these people were coming in out of the halfway houses applying for jobs. And they said, how did you hear about it? Pastor Danny, he's been telling everybody. <laughs> we finally ended up hiring someone, and he ended up coming to this church for a while. He ended up moving away. But I was telling him in this time, I said, Dad, in about another four weeks, we'll be cut up in all our orders, and I could be able to take off and Friday, and we'll go play some golf. And he said, you can stand on your head for four more weeks. And I said, yeah, I sure can. That was always the saying, you can stand on your head for just a little bit longer. But you know, when you begin to change your perspective, it doesn't seem that long. Well, four more weeks, not a big deal. See, we got to change our perspective of how we look at ourselves. You know, we, we, we all have labels that we label ourselves as. If, if you don't label yourself, someone else labels you. You guys know what I'm talking about? Oh, that's so-and-so for the wrong side of the tracks. Or that's so-and-so, you know what their mom did? That's so-and-so, you know what their dad did? But I'll tell you today, church, there's no label in here in church, amen. amen. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're all the same, amen. When you get to heaven, you're not going to just say, oh, there's so-and-so, he needs to be in this part of heaven. No. When you get to heaven... We're all going to be the same. So in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, go ahead and put that up there. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a what? By changing the way you what? Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and what? Perfect. He said, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. We, you know, it takes 21 days to stop a habit. And it takes a long, maybe it takes a lifetime for some of you all to stop seeing yourself as this person. How God wants you to actually be this person. We, I, I've noticed as we've been pastoring for less than 12 weeks that I, I am dealing with a lot of roots from 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. That's not who you are. And, and even though someone said you were that person, you're not that person anymore. You're not that person anymore. And see, we, we, but, but they said this, and then you get offended, and then you get upset, and all you can see is yourself as this person. But God said, no, you're this person that changed your perspective. I didn't do this for you, for you can stay right here. I died on the cross and rose again on the third day, for you can be here, not here. Change your. Now, change your. Amen. Oh, I feel like preaching. I tell you, after that, uh, after, after communion, I just, wow, that was amazing. I have never shouted in communion in my whole life. No offense, leadership. You guys got some big steps to fall. That was awesome. She did go more than five minutes, Donnie, I'll tell you that. <laughs> we always tell them five to eight minutes. But it's all right. It's all right. In Ezekiel chapter 37, God is talking to a prophet Ezekiel. Now, Ezekiel, is, is in, in chapter 36, he's talking about Israel. And see, Israel at this time, because of the decisions that they made, there, there, it just looks like there's no hope for Israel. Just because you made some bad decisions, there still is hope, amen. I love how Jordan said, your story's not over. Your story is not over. And so Israel was in this position, the prophet was saying, he, God was speaking to him, he said, I'm about to restore Israel. And people, at the time, people were like, what? You, Israel is like about to just crumble, but God said, I'm not done with it yet. And he spoke to Ezekiel, and this is what he said in, in 34. Before I get to 34, there was a valley, and he shows them in a vision. Now, this was a vision. Understand I said that, okay? This is a what? It didn't happen. It was a vision, okay? So, because people, I was on the internet, people were like, oh, yeah, man. And like, no, it's a vision, okay? But there was a vision that God showed him of these dry bones in a valley. Now, I love that he used a old dry bones in a valley. He, he pretty much showed the state where Israel was at the time. 
Because, you know, you remember the old song, God still loves me in the valley. You know, he's still God of the good times and bad times. And, but, you know, I love that God used a valley. And then on top of that, he puts bones everywhere. So I'm telling you this because of this. You need to understand that you might understand God's plans, but you just need to trust him. Ezekiel, all he saw was bones in the valley. That, that's anybody up. I would be calling Tracy. I'm just saying. And like, Tracy, we did, I don't know, you need to come over here. I don't know, it's bones everywhere in the valley. But he saw this vision of Tracy's state cop, for the record. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> or Joe. He's county cop. But anyway, so he saw this vision of dry bones. Now, this is what he said. Then he said to me, speak prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones. Oh, glory to God. Listen to this. Listen to the word of the Lord. Let's go read that again. Dry bones. Go back to that, Chris. Sorry. Dry bones. Listen to the word of the Lord. Go to verse 5. Keep going. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath and make you live again. I'll put flesh and muscles on you, cover you with skin. I will put breath into you, and I will, and I will come to life. Then you will know that I am the what? So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly as I spoke, there was rattling noises all around the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves completely to skeletons. Then as he watched muscles and flesh form over the bones, then the skin covered their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Keep verse 9 there. But there was still no breath. Now there was a body, but they were waiting on the breath of God. Some of you are feeling, maybe you feel a little dry. Maybe you feel like, I don't know why, I just feel like I just can't push through. You need the breath of God. You need the breath of God and you're like, say, Lord, I need your breath. I need a fresh anointing. I need a fresh Holy Spirit come upon me right now. Why is it so dry? Because you need a fresh breath of God. Amen. Amen. Then he said to them, speak prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, oh, breathe the four winds. Breathe into the dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as of this. He commanded me. And, bre and breath came into their bodies. Oh, check this out. That's shout material, church. And they all came to life and stood upon their feet, a great army. Go verse, go verse 11. Let's go give the Lord a hand clap. Oh, that's the God we serve today. That's the God we serve today. But you've got to do your part. You need to change your, you need to change your perspective. You can't do this without you. He can do it, but he's asking you to do your part. Well, Lord, I love you. I love you. And you're awesome. And you're great. But you can't go out and live the life you, you lived before. You want a fresh breath? You want the anointing? You want the cost of anointing? It's going to cost you something. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying we have become old dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore prophesy to them. And this is what the sovereign Lord says. Oh, my people, I will open up your graves in exile and cause you to rise. Oh, glory to God. Call you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, my people, you will know that I am the what? Verse 14, we're stopped there. I will put this. Oh, here we go again, church. I will put my what? Spirit. In you, and I will make you live again and return home to your land. And then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. Amen. Woo, let's give the Lord one more hand. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's the God that we serve. I don't know what situation you're going through. I don't know what problems you're facing. But God knows, and he's bigger than anything you'll face. Amen? Stop looking at the problems. Stop looking at everything around and start looking your focus on God and who he is. Amen? Because he's God and he's good. See, it would have been easier for Ezekiel 
You've been like, do you, do you know what's going on? God, do you see this? I mean, this is where the nation's at. And he said, that's where the nation is, but this is where I'm going to take it. You might see this, but this is what I see because I'm God. What question today is, what did, what did we learn? What did God show us in the vision? First point is this. I don't know if you have those points up or not, Chris. What did we learn? It's change. You need to change your perspective. You need to stop looking at the negative and start looking at the positive. You need to stop looking at things that they're not and what they're about to be. You've got to change your perspective. It's so easy for us to get caught up in the negativity. If you flip on the news, it's full of negative. I don't even watch the news. Now you think I was crazy. I've got, I've got my father-in-law and i got Carol. They keep me in tune, so we're good. You know, I, I know what's going on. All right. <laughs> if it's really big, I guess I'll maybe get a text or something. I don't know. You know I'm not too worried, man. But, you know, the reality is you've got to change your perspective. You've got to see who God is in that situation. Number two, what did you learn today? What did you learn from that vision? It's not, it was not over yet. See, all they saw was, they even said, all hope is gone. But it wasn't over yet. I was, got the, the privilege to hang out with Chad and Adrian and Carter. I got to hang out with the whole family. We had such a good time hanging out there. And, you know, and, you know, it, there was, they kept getting phone calls every 45 minutes, and we were just all excited. And, and now we, Carter is doing great, right? And we, you know, that awesome. Give the Lord a hand clap. I was driving to the hospital in the church van, and I won't tell you that story. Like half the people know that story now. Broke down because someone put a hole in the gas tank. Yay. <laughs> but anyway, but I was, I was driving there, and I began to get emotional because I started thinking my child was in their situation. But then the Lord said, it's not over yet. I'm just about to do what I'm about to do because I'm God and I'm good. And here I am. i got to go in as their pastor and say, praise God, he's still on the throne. But you know what? I wanted, I wanted to cry with them. Because I can imagine my little eight-year-old baby getting worked on. But God's not over yet. And look, Carter, he is going to be going to school Wednesday, it sounds like. Isn't that awesome? The God we serve is awesome. Third day, we learn from that vision. Let's see what else we learn from the vision. That I am still God. See, in verse 14, he said this. Can you put verse 14 back up here again? I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. So I'm going to tell you, when you're going through something and you're not understanding it, you need to change your perspective. And when God does what he does, everyone around will know it was God. It wasn't just coincidence. It just wasn't just happened. It happened because it was God and he's good to his word. And you know, man, that's only God could do that. Only God could do this. This um, last uh, Sunday, Liz and I got to celebrate 12, yes, 12 years. Checking. <laughs> Take that off the thing. 12 years of marriage. We got married 12 years ago. And uh, thank you. Thank you. I don't know why she's been married long to me. I, <laughs> I definitely got the good end of the deal, that's for sure. <laughs> and, uh, but 12 years, so we went up to Bloomington and went to Goodwill shopping. That's how we do it. That's how us middle-aged, sturdy people do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we walk around Dick's Sporting Good and look at all the stuff we like to buy, you know. <laughs> but anyway, on the way home, we, on the way there, we spent the night at Spring Mill. Now, if you ever been to Spring Mill, that's not a promotion, and they're not paying me, I promise you. It's a pretty cool place. And I'm planning on this, uh, this spring or, or early summer having a, all of us to go together. One Sunday, all of us go out there and hang out. Would that be fun? Yeah. So we'll softball tournament out the field and cave. Good times. Anyway, so we went, and uh, I won't do that again, I promise. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, we went, and we were driving around having a good time. There's only 10 people there because how many people want to go in 28 degrees? And I said, let's go down to the village. It's just too cold. And I said, I didn't even bring a jacket. You're right. So I was like, we'll just drive around, best we can do, you know. We're driving around the, the ridge of it. And as I was there, we were talking about Spring Mill. And, we're just, and the Lord showed me this when I got home a few hours later. See, someone way back in the day looked at Spring Mill and just didn't see a park. They saw a spring. And when they saw the spring, they saw more than just water running out. They saw more than just 
the, the fresh water, they saw if you could dam it up, then you could build a mill. And if you could build a mill, then you could build a community. See, your situation's the same way. You're only seeing this. Like the, the pioneers back in the day, they saw a spring, but what could be if the spring was developed? Same way with you. If you could develop and walk in what God wants you to walk in and change your perspective, what could you do for the kingdom of God? Make a declaration. See, what, what Ezekiel was doing, he was prophesying over the situation, and he was actually, sometimes you need to prophesy over yourself. You say, how do you prophesy over yourself, Pastor? It's pretty easy. Quote the word of God. Yeah. Amen. I'm saying name it, claim it. I'm saying I'm the head and not the Amen. I'm above and not. Amen. If God is for me, who can? Amen. This is easy. I am fearfully and wonderfully. Amen. Oh, you're no accident. Yeah. You're not born at the wrong time. You're not born in the wrong family. Change your perspective and get your hands up and start praising God. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Woo! I tell you, I better, I better save it. My th throat will go out here in a second. I have Liz finish up for me. But it's time for us to change our perspective. I'm telling you what, I, if, if we, we really understand who we are in Christ, if we can really understand who we are in Christ, then no hell, no demon will ever go against you. No demon can say, You're, oh, this is the way it's going to be. No, 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 no. I'm going to change my perspective. I know the God that I serve. I know who he is. I know he's big enough. I know he's strong enough. And they looked at the spring. Now, part two of the spring mill, and I promise I'll get off spring mill. But <laughs> you blame Brett Byers for the rest of this. <laughs> they, the, the spring, it, we know there's a town, and know it's a part. But why did it just stop being a park? Why did it not flourish to be a town? Why did it just become this little bitty park outside of Mitchell? Why did it not become a town like New Albany or Indianapolis? Why did it stop? Because you don't want to tell you why I felt that someone stopped changing their perspective and said, this is just the way it's going to be. This is as good as it's going to get. But I want to tell you what, it's not just as good as it's going to get in the kingdom of God. You still strive after God. You still go after him. You don't ever stop giving up. Your knees should be callous. Your hands should be sore. You should be ready to praise God at all times. It's not a Sunday thing or a Wednesday thing or a Thursday night thing. It's an all the time thing. You've got to praise him. Declare it. And when you're declare, that everyone around you will see the glory of God. You are the greatest missionary in southern Indiana. You're the greatest missionary. We don't have missionaries here for a reason because you're the missionary. Get a hold of that for a second. God has put me at this job. God has put me at this neighborhood. God has put me at this position for such a time as this. But it's up for us to change our perspective and see who we are in Christ. Amen? Amen. Got one more story for you and we'll tie it up. It's time to change your perspective. Go ahead and turn it to Luke chapter 7. This is a good story. <laughs> story about the alabaster jar. I think everybody knows this story, don't we? I think we can all relate to a little bit of who this lady was and what she had to go through. That's one of the reasons why I wanted you to see that. A people of new beginnings and second chances. This lady, the alabaster jar, had a second chance. And man, what did she do with that? She took it and ran. God has given you a second chance. Maybe he's given you a third chance or a fourth chance. Take the chance and don't look back. You need to change your perspective of who you thought you were and who you are and who you're becoming. I don't care what they said about you. I don't care what all the kids said in school. I don't care what your ex-wife or your ex-husband or all of your relatives said about you. God is saying something about you. He's saying you're fearfully and wonderfully made, and you're not an accident. You're the head, and you're not the tail, and you're not above, and you're not beneath. And I have great plans for you. I want to breathe my breath into you, and I want to see you flourish, and I want to see you do the kingdom of God that I've called you to do. But it's up for us to stop our thinking and start our changing and start making a declaration of who God is. So in Luke chapter 7, 
Jesus was hanging out. And I love that he hung out with whoever. Isn't that cool? I mean, I just love that, man. Jesus didn't have, like, a clique. I know he had disciples, but he didn't have anybody. He just hung out whoever. Okay, Jesus, the Pharisee said, you want to come over to my house and have a meal with me? Jesus is like, yeah, absolutely. Now, this, he was a Pharisee. His name was Simon. And as he goes to uh, the man's house, there's a woman that walks in. This is what it says, verse 37. We're going to add authority. When a certain immoral woman from the city, and what does it say? What's the next word? How do you? How did she hear about Jesus? Someone told her. How did, over here in the cheap seats, Matt Overlees, how did she, how did she hear about Jesus? Someone what? Testimony. testimony. Someone gave a what? Testimony. She heard from somebody's testimony. One of the five, the Lord gave me this, and I'm not going to share it yet, but he gave me five things how to grow in church. Number three was your testimony. Your testimony. So she heard he was eating there. She brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell at his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the Pharisee who invited him saw this, he said to what? You ever say something to yourself that you shouldn't say? Am I the only one in this church today? Oh, thank you, Will. Dave Johnson. Yes, you know what I'm talking about, Eli. You say something to yourself that you shouldn't be saying. You know what that's called? It's called self-righteous. Oh, you know what? They wouldn't have these problems if they would be coming to Sunday school every Sunday. Oh, they wouldn't have these problems. They wouldn't be doing drugs all the time. That's partly true. But by the grace of God, you're not that person. Come on now, it's easy for us. We don't know what they went through. We don't know their whole story. We don't know what they had to get to to get to there, and maybe they're a little bit better than they used to be. Now, I'm not saying we're condemning sin, but I'm going to say we got to give them some grace because I know I need some grace. Amen? Amen. We talk to ourselves. I'm telling you why your pastor is number one on this. Shame on me. If this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. Now, next part is this. She's a sinner. I'm so glad y'all don't talk like this anymore. I'm just saying, there's a sinner. All right. <laughs> then Jesus answered his thoughts. I love it. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher. Simon replied. Go ahead and put on 47. So he said, I got something, but I love this part. He said, if someone gave you, if you someone had 50 silvers, and they, they loaned to that person. The other person loaned 500 silvers, and they loaned to the same person. But both people could not pay back the price. They just couldn't pay it. Which one would be more grateful, the 50 or the 500? And he said, the one with the larger, obviously. You know, the first thing is, is Jesus had her back. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus has got my back. <laughs> Jesus has got my back, Lizanne. Jesus has got my back, Corey Kern. Brett Byers, BJ, Jesus has got your back. Don't worry about the other voices because Jesus already got your back. I think that's so cool. And then this is what he said. He said, I tell you, her sins, and he, didn't, he wasn't sugarcoating it, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love, but a person who's forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are what? You know, the question you might ask, why was she crying? Why was she so upset? It might have been the first time in her life that she felt loved. Might have been the first time in her life she felt someone wasn't judging her. And Jesus said, if she could ever get a hold of what I have for her life, her life will be changed. All she has to do is change her what? You've got to change your perspective. And you got to trust God. And you got to walk with him daily. So I'm changing the way I think I did it one time. It's all, it's going to take time and time and time and time again. I'm not that person anymore in Jesus' name. I might have been that person, but I'm not anymore. I'm not that person anymore. And I think what's so amazing about this story is that she knew the people that were in that house. She didn't get an invite, obviously. 
He was pretty upset she was there. And I love that she didn't come empty-handed. Isn't that awesome? She didn't just show up and say, hey, eat your bean dip. I mean, come on. Let's go. <laughs> hey, oh, you know, I love Mountain Dew. Yeah, you know, she, you know, she was just, she showed up with some expensive perfume that cost a year's salary, scholars say. See, she didn't come. She came with everything that she had. When you come to Christ, you come with everything you have. You come with all you got and say, Lord, I know you already know this, but I'm going to pour my heart out to you again. And she was at the feet of Jesus. What's the symbol of feet? The feet was because they didn't have shoes back in those days. We'll keep it there. All right? And it obviously was pretty dirty. And what he told, what he told Simon a few verses before that, he said, this woman is doing something that you didn't do. He said, you didn't. You didn't give me a, greet me with a kiss. You didn't anoint my head with oil. You didn't wash my feet. And she's done all this. More than you've done. See, she went after Christ with all that she had. And she's wiping his feet with her hair. Whew. For the first time in her life, she knew, I'm going to be a different person when I get up. I'm going to be a different person when I get on my feet. It's finally going to stick. It's finally going to change. These old habits aren't going to happen anymore. These old way of thinking is not going to happen anymore. I'm going to be a new person. Go ahead and bring the praise team on up. What did she do that was so different? First, she poured out her heart to God. And second of all, She gave everything she had to Christ. I don't, I don't keep saying this over and again, but I just can't get away from it. I'm not sure what situations you all are going through. But God says today, you need to see me the way I see you. You need to see me the way that I see you and not the way the enemy sees you. Remember, we talked about it a few weeks ago at the Transfiguration when they saw Peter, James, and John, when they actually finally saw Jesus, their eyes were open to him. And they saw him in a different light. Some of you today, you need to see yourself. You're not that same person anymore. Stop letting the enemy defeat you and beat you down and say, that's just the way. You're going to change your perspective. And say, I'm not that person. I am the head and I am the tail. And I'm above and not beneath. Christ paid a price that you shall be free. We will change our perspective. We are going to make a declaration today. We're going to prophesy over ourselves like Ezekiel 37 and say, we're going to be the person that you've called me to be. I'm going to change my perspective. The next thing, what happens, church, all hell cannot come after you. I was that person, but I'm not anymore in Jesus' name. I might have used dirty needles. I might have drank. I might have been a liar. I might have been adulterous. I might have been a thief. I might have been a this, that, and the other. But I'm not anymore in Jesus' name. That's who I was. That's not who I am. That's who I'm going to be. This lady was changed because she gave everything she had and went after all these things. And she was never, ever, ever the same. It's time for us to stand to your feet to change your perspective. If you have anything you pray for, anything you want to talk to, I'm here right now. Let's raise our hands. Let's embrace the presence of God. And let's start declaring and prophesying in Jesus' mind. Come on, speak to yourself. Speak to your spell. Speak to yourself. And say, I am not that person. In faith believing, it will change. In faith believing, I will become what you call me to be. I don't care what the voices say. In Jesus' name.